permanent mold allows us to use particular types of alloys to, to design and develop a part that has strength and structure, uh, but also has some, some nice aesthetic finishes that you won't get out of a sand casting, if you will. And we can keep costs down because we can actually cast in features where sand foundries need to machine. Hi, David Kobler from Pittsburgh PA, Gupta Permold, and we do aluminum castings. A permanent mold casting is like a die casting. It has a steel mold like die casting, but we gravity feed like a sand casting. We're in every market possible, anywhere from automotive to agriculture, medical, and we definitely get into military from time to time. We only use aluminum, so I cast in different series of aluminum. Permanent mold is typically for meeting the low volumes, 500 to 5,000 units a year. Permanent mold casting allows us to do something that's called semi-permanent mold. Semi-permanent mold allows us to use sand cores to get undercuts and hollows. It allows me to actually decrease the weight of a part. So we'll take an actual sand piece and we'll lay it right down into the steel mold and we'll actually cast around that and then it provides the cavity or the core inside the part. So if you take a look at the ribs here in this part, most casters would need to actually cast in the ribbing much larger and then machine it out. I can actually cast it to tolerance, which allows us to drop cost, allows us to, to increase the lead time. That way the client can receive the part much faster. So in a little part like this, if you take a look at the ribbing, most casters would need to cast this as one whole slug and then they would actually machine in those features. Whereas in permanent mold casting, we can get those features right out of the steel mold. About 80% of all the work that we do in-house is CNC machined. We have in-house engineering as well. We can design your part, we can design the cavity of your mold. We can actually take you from something on a napkin to a finished part. This would be a typical simple part. I have the ability to be able to cast it so it has a different feature to it. You can see the O-rings that are in there. You can see the top area that's already there. Okay. It allows me to produce a part like this instead of a slug like this. So if you take a part like this, it has a very nice refined surface finish. That comes from the steel mold that we make. If it was a sand part, it would actually be very grainy. We do replace machining again, depending upon wall thickness and tolerancing, depending upon the complexity of the part. If you take a look at that O-ring that's right there, if you can get in there, most processes, when you'd have to machine that in. We can actually cast that in. Allows us to drop cost. What we do with prototyping is we'll usually outsource to someone who will do another process called lost wax or plaster molding. And the nice thing about that is when you pursue that type of prototyping, you can make those prototypes the exact same way that my steel mold would make your parts. This is one of the jobs that we were able to actually uh, earn, if you will, from our expertise from another vendor that you know, we've come in contact with. Uh, it's a job that just wasn't running properly there and we were able to get it to run properly where we're at. See us and other quality suppliers at d2p.com. Mm -hmm.